Hey, William. Hi, Sebastian. <laughs> hey. um, so you, you, you talked about um, uh, ICOs being a, a good way to fund startups, and to some extent, I, I agree with that. However, I think there's a nuance, perhaps, with like previous internet bubbles, whereas the investment was coming from institutional investors, coming from VCs, accredited investors. And the difference with the ICO space now, and not to say that the amount of money being raised in ICOs is nowhere near, is anywhere near the, the amount of money being raised, like, you know, in startups, like traditional VCs. But the difference uh, is that there's no accreditation for investors. And so I think that the risk for the investors is higher. Because an institutional investor, you know, as you know, will do due diligence and there's a whole process before money actually gets put. And you're not talking about money that's being put in by just regular people. Um, so what do you think about this, this sort of seeming difference and this change of paradox, right, from primarily institutional investors doing due diligence and then, okay, we're losing their money, fine, uh, to potentially like regular people being um, brought into these ICOs, which sometimes can be on, based on dubious claims. Uh, a, lot, a lot of the projects out there are, uh, hopefully will deliver, but uh, presumably a lot, a lot will not. Sure, I'll answer that. Before that, I want to give a shout out to Sebastien because uh, Sebastien works for a French company that is, uh, I think, going to be very important in the blockchain space, Stratum. Um, and I like to highlight that because there aren't a lot of French companies that are in the blockchain space. So when I hear of the company Lyon, Stratum, and others, I get very excited. And you're working on process, a proof of process, which is one of the uh, application areas of the blockchain. Um, and and um, I think it's a great market. So I, I'm not saying that ICOs are the only way to do it. Obviously, there's, it's, it's one of the ways. It's not the only way. And uh, getting traditional VC money has a lot of advantages that the ICO uh, companies are not going to get. So what they're not going to get in the ICO, they're not going to get the advice and the, and the help uh, that VCs and other advisors can give them. And um, I think it's, it's an advantage, perhaps. If, you have, if you're able to raise money then without an ICO, fine. If you're able to raise money with the ICO, it's fine as well. Either way, I think there are two different ways of doing it. Um, ICOs will find their way, and now they are trying to get advisors and help from the traditional side. I get called all the time and asked to be an advisor on ICOs. Just want to put my name there so that to give it some kind of uh, sense of, uh, make it more le legitimate maybe, but I'm very selective. Like I'm not, there's the quality spectrum is from like all over the place. Uh, but I, I was an entrepreneur myself, so I, I give lots of credit. Anybody who wants an entrepreneur, chapeau. It's like, it's not easy. It's not easy being an entrepreneur. So, uh, and, and if you're getting money in easier ways than other ways, Fine, go spend the next two years of your life creating something new, and and that's the only way to know if there is success. You have to create a product, and then you have to go and get lots of users, and that's the difficult part. So, one criticism about these ICOs is that all of, many of them are focused on the product, and and not enough on the users. But you, you cannot get users without product, so you have to really get the product first. But then, even if you have a good product. If you don't get users to come in, the reason why Ethereum became so successful is because they had such a compelling vision that all of the developers, the first users were developers. You know, we're still waiting for the consumer-based Ethereum applications, and this is Ethereum, who is, which is the second largest, which has been around for two and a half years. Think about it, two and a half years, and we're still. I can only name two consumer apps that are based on Ethereum that are not wallets. There's an application called Token, and there's one called Status, where you can really download it, and then there's Ethereum in the background, and you can send money to your friends, and there's a bot inside. And these are the two applications that I saw that really, if you look at them, you don't even know there's blockchain behind it. So that's not the consumer side. Uh, but the enterprise side, there are companies like Stratum that are taking specific uh, a specific sector, a specific area, a specific um, functionality, and, and becoming really good at it. 
and and uh, and and starting to deploy it um, at the enterprise level. And we're going to see a lot of those kinds of companies as well. Um, so we, we haven't seen exactly, I think, uh, the end of this movie. This movie, the ICO movie, is just starting. So we don't know how what the end of it is going to be like. And, and then we're going to learn some things from it. And maybe we are 20% of the way, I think, in learning uh, about the ICO, uh, the goods and bads of the ICO process. Um, some of you know I'm running, uh, I'm organizing a, a conference in May, uh, in two weeks, in New York, called the Token Summit. It was, it's the first, it's the first conference that's going to go in depth, discussing uh, what I call the token-based economy, where ICOs are part of, of that. Uh, I am not so excited about new tokens or new ICO, new uh, cryptocurrencies. I get more excited about new business models that are enabled by tokens. So there are lots of tokens, and it's easy to say, yeah, I'm going to raise a token. But the next question is why? What is the token going to be used for? Why do you need the token? So one of the other criticisms I'm seeing right now is that some of them are, even protocols, are, are coming out and saying, yeah, there's a token. But in reality, I question whether the token is needed. They are saying we're going to do a token because it's easier to raise money with the token method than with the PC method. So that's one of the potential drawback, and, 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 and we have to watch for that. Thank you, William. I think the question is indeed very large uh, concerning the crypto funding and what it's going to look like, and I think it's the beginning of a new story. Yeah, yeah, just one quick one. Uh, another side of this is the crypto funds. Uh, another uh, wave that is coming is, is, is not uh, just companies raising uh, cur currency, cryptocurrency, but funds that now raise money to just invest in those cryptocurrencies. And there's at least a dozen of them that I know of right now, and that's another uh, set of activity. There's going to be 50 of them, maybe 100 next year.